On November 7, 2022, Sam Bankman Freed woke up with 16 billion. On November 8, his net worth plummeted to less than 1 billion, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. It's one of the greatest single day financial losses ever. Bankman Freed was the co founder and CEO of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX. Like, what's the extra factor X of Sam Bankman Freed there? Quantum mechanics. No. How so? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, and it's an interesting question. And I think the, the, the most interesting thing about it is that there isn't an obvious answer. Those words ring true now more than ever. FTX used to be worth $32 billion, but has now filed for bankruptcy on November 11. He summed up the mess in a series of tweets, including this. I'm sorry. I effed up and should have done better. Ironically, he recently criticized Mark Zuckerberg for bleeding money on the metaverse, leading to mass layoffs at Meta, which I did a video on. His fortunes have now taken a similar turn. Or perhaps his misfortunes are more like the fictional Russ Hanneman from HBO's TV show, Silicon Valley. 986 million. I'm not a billionaire anymore, Richard. I'm a 986-unaire, which isn't even a f***ing thing. I'm out of the three comma club. The sudden fall of FTX came as a shock and will have repercussions for anyone interested in investing in crypto. Yet upon closer inspection, it's no surprise FTX failed. This video will uncover why. Bankman Freed grew up on the campus of Stanford University, where both his parents taught law. He worked as a Wall Street trader before co-founding FTX in 2019, alongside former Google employee Gary Wang. FTX was backed by high-profile venture capital firms and became one of the world's largest digital currency exchanges for customers buy, sell, and store various cryptocurrencies. Very excited to talk to Sam Bankman Free, the CEO of FTX. And now you are one of, if not the leader of this industry. The 30-year-old was hailed as the next Warren Buffett and attracted the rich and famous. With FTX, I have everything I need to buy, sell, and trade crypto safely. NBA star Stephen Curry became an ambassador. I'm getting into crypto with FTX. So did the NFL's Tom Brady who personally invested in FTX. The FTX brand was everywhere, on the arena where the Miami Heat play, though it will now be renamed, on Mercedes Formula One race cars, though those stickers will now be removed. Sam Bankman Freed, or SBF as he's called, became one of the richest people in the world. His net worth reached a high of 26 billion. You couldn't tell by looking at him, he slept on a beanbag at the office and drove a Toyota Corolla. He did splurge a bit though. He lives in a luxury penthouse in the Bahamas with a golden doodle named Gopher and 10 roommates. Apparently his roommates all dated each other at some point. A person familiar with the matter told the crypto news site Coindesk, the whole operation was run by a gang of kids in the Bahamas. Some were former coworkers, some he met at his alma mater, MIT, and one he dated, Caroline Ellison, the CEO of Alameda Research. Alameda Research was a trading firm founded by Bankman Freed. Although Alameda and FTX were meant to be separate businesses, their ties were unusually close. Coindesk reviewed a leaked document that appeared to show that Alameda held an alarmingly large amount of the cryptocurrency created by FTX, called FTT. The document revealed 40% of Alameda's assets were in FTT. Technically, that's not illegal, but it did prove that Alameda was heavily dependent on its sister company, rather than relying on an independent asset like other cryptocurrencies or fiat currency, which would have been less risky. Because their financial health was tied together, the failure of one company would risk destroying the other. And that's what happened. So how did the mess begin? When the crypto market crashed in the spring, Bankman Freed wanted to save struggling crypto companies by relying on risky bets from Alameda. Alameda committed half a billion dollars to finance crypto lender Voyager Digital he said he felt a responsibility to act. 
first of all, she's backstopping customers and making sure they're protected. But second of all, stopping contagion from spreading through the ecosystem. He was seen as a savior, and that matched the image he wanted to portray to the world. He promised to give away most of his wealth, but his desire to save other crypto companies ended up hurting his own companies. When Voyager Digital filed for bankruptcy protection a month later, Alameda lost $500 million. Alameda was in trouble. In order to save it from imploding, Bankman Freed then propped up Alameda by secretly transferring 10 billion of customer funds from FTX to Alameda, according to Reuters. He reportedly built a backdoor in FTX's accounting software that let him move billions of dollars without flagging the transactions to anyone, including external auditors. But Bankman Freed says it's not how it looks. In text messages to Reuters, he wrote, we didn't secretly transfer. We had confusing internal labeling and misread it without elaborating further. The story gets crazier. A large portion of customer funds is now missing. At least a billion dollars worth of customer funds have mysteriously vanished, reports Reuters. And the story gets even crazier. Someone also stole hundreds of millions of remaining funds at FTX. The new CEO of FTX confirmed that there was a hack and the company is cooperating with law enforcement. It could lead to criminal charges. When the financial ties between FTX and Alameda first surfaced in that article by Coindesk, it worried Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. Binance was an early investor in FTX. It decided to offload 580 million of FTX's native token, FTT. Binance co-founder and CEO Cheng Peng Zhao confirmed his company's mass selling was due to recent revelations, alluding to the cozy ties between Bankman Freed's two companies. Binance's mass selling caused the price of the token to plummet. Then, other customers also pulled out, fearing this was yet another failing crypto company. They rushed to withdraw six billion in just three days, and FTX couldn't meet demand. As FTX looked doomed to die, Binance offered it a lifeline by agreeing to acquire the company. Cheng Peng Zhao, or CZ as he's commonly known, planned to bail out his arch rival. But then the bailout didn't happen. Binance backed out as a result of corporate due diligence and also mentioned the reports of mishandled customer funds and alleged US agency investigations. U.S. regulators are reportedly investigating whether FTX illegally used customer funds to prop up Alameda. FTX's sudden fall from grace has further tarnished an industry that's still recovering from the collapse of crypto prices in May amid rising interest rates. The spectacular fall of FTX could bring more regulation to the crypto industry. The U.S. bans a risky type of crypto trading in which investors borrow money to make huge bets on the future price of crypto. FTX's American arm is for basic trading to comply with US regulations. Bankman Freed had lobbied lawmakers for more friendly regulations and donated millions to the Democrats, including 5 million to Joe Biden's 2020 presidential campaign and groups supporting him. The fallout from FTX will take months, if not years to resolve. Lawyers have to decide whether the exchange can operate. And then there's the issue of all the customers who just want their money back. FTX halted withdrawals until further notice. The question for consumers and companies is how much they'll be able to recover through the bankruptcy process. The new CEO of FTX is veteran Wall Street bankruptcy lawyer John Ray, who handled the cleanup of Enron, which was the largest bankruptcy in US history at the time. Enron had liabilities of 23 billion. FTX's liabilities may be double that amount, as much as 50 billion, according to a legal filing in US bankruptcy court in Delaware. When Bankman Freed resigned as CEO, he said, I'm really sorry, again, that we ended up here. Hopefully this can bring some amount of transparency, trust, and governance. For customers, those are just empty words. Crypto is still a new and relatively untested market. 
despite the pains right now. Many believe it is the future of finance. If you'd like to learn more about how crypto works, you can learn about the math and technology behind cryptocurrencies through hands-on puzzles. On Brilliant's website and app, you can learn the mechanics of maintaining and securing a cryptocurrency. And then you can decide for yourself if crypto is a fad or the next big thing. My viewers also love Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course, where you can learn the fundamentals of computer science and no coding is required. It's great if you're in school or if you're already in the workforce and want to brush up on core computer science concepts. Brilliant is great for anyone who wants to improve their STEM skills. You can start your math journey by looking at fractions, percents, and ratios in everyday contexts. I personally love going through their logic courses and they've helped improve my critical thinking skills. Brilliant is free to try out if you head to the custom link in my description, brilliant.org slash newsthink. And the first 200 people who use my custom link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, which gives you access to all of their course offerings. Thanks for watching. For Newsthink, I'm Cindy Palm.